a few minutes left here. I'm gonna to try to get through this. So A7 security misconfiguration. This is a big topic. There's actually lots of different vulnerabilities that kind of fit into this one category. I'm gonna talk through probably the most common one that we see. Um, it basically comes down to the fact that APIs are often used to power single page apps and mobile apps. And a lot of times the exact same API is used to work across both. So when the API endpoint is hosted at api.example.com, but the single page app is hosted at my.example.com, the single page app must make what's called a cross origin request to access that data. So what does this look like from a flow or sequence diagram? Basically SPA client says, hey, get slash user HTTP 1.1, here's the host api.example.com, origin, I'm running from my.example.com. API server responds back and it says, okay, cool, here you go. Access control allow origin is set to star and access control allow credentials, which is the course header that basically allows you to pass across authenticated session information like a cookie. Um, I'm gonna set that to true. And the browser is smart enough to basically say, eh, no, we're not going to allow this. And the reason why the browser is smart enough to say that we're not going to allow this is because you're trying to basically say, access control allow origin is star and access control allow credentials is true. This is basically way too permissive. Um, the browser manufacturers basically knew this is what developers were going to do, and they basically said, no, we're not going to do that. So developers basically came back and said, okay, well, we're gonna reflect back the origin header to under overcome browser restrictions. So what does this look like? Well, they basically say get slash user, and it makes that same exact request. And the API server now basically responds back with access control allow origin, my.example.com, and access control allow credentials is true and this will work. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with this approach. This is actually the recommended approach of how you work with this. But there's a caveat. You have to make sure that you're using an allow list of approved origins. Otherwise, an attacker can basically go and use any other origin server or any other site across the web, interact cross origin with your request and be able to basically interact with it. Um, interestingly, what this will make the application vulnerable to is cross-site request forgery. So let's talk about how we can actually mitigate this real fast. I'm gonna switch back over here into my console. I'm getting really close on time, so I'm gonna try to blow through this one quickly. We'll make this slides and uh, presentation available. Uh, so if I go in here and I look at my uh, responses, I'm gonna go back to my rewrite response capabilities. And on this one, I have my A7 demo, which is enforcing core's header. Um, so in here, we basically are looking for instances where the header value, the origin, does not match api.betapay.me, or actually in this case, sorry, that was actually even wrong. Uh, I wanted to make this my.betapay.me uh, in this case, which is basically my uh, endpoint that I wanna have. And what I wanna do here is I wanna rewrite this response header. I can basically say access control allow origin, and I'm going to set it to api.betapay.me. So basically what this is saying is that regardless of what the request comes back with, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure that this is actually correct. And so if I go in here real fast and I switch over to Postman, I'll show you what this looks like. So over here, I have my head request where basically I have, uh, I'm. Uh, head request is used as a, a pre-flight basically for a lot of cores uh, in the browsers. Um, and so basically what you can see here is I'm specifying some site.example.com. Um, I can tell that this is going to be vulnerable to this if basically the server responds back. Oh, and give me one second here. I have saved examples luckily. So you can see here in my response and the headers here, you can tell that this is going to be vulnerable because it's going to actually reflect back some site.example.com. So what I specified as the origin header here, it basically just said, you know, this is what I'm seeing back. Um, this is what we would consider to be uh, a security misconfiguration for an overly permissive course header. Now, with the fixed version of that, when I implemented that rule, basically what it said was that regardless of what I had from an origin, it's automatically going to reflect back the origin that I specify. So the api.betapay.me. So this is an easy way basically for you to go in and to fix this. Now, ultimately it's gonna be something that has to be fixed at either the API gateway level or the code level, um, but it's a quick and easy way to be able to do that. And so switching back here, I'm gonna just go ahead and do a quick uh, finishing up 
before I get yanked by Chris. <laughs> I feel the hook coming. So last but not least, security misconfiguration. Things to recap, developers like to break things. I'm a developer, I like to break things. Uh, response rules, they allow you to fix things. So they're great. We recommend using them. It's the reason why we built it. Um, but as I mentioned, security misconfiguration, there's a big topic. There's lots of different things and capabilities that are out there. So watch out for other misconfigurations.